Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar talking about transparency in AI. My name is Ya Qi Chen, and I will be the host for today. I'm the principal data scientist at Object Computing. I have Maddie, who's one of our talented data scientists with me, and she will have a notebook demo to show how easy it is to use our internal AI platform, Alice.ai, to crystallize any machine learning model by simply providing your model as it is. Before we dive into this exciting demo, let's ask ourselves, why explainability matters to business? If you are a business owner or decision maker, before you adopt any machine learning solution, you should really ask yourself, what is the impact of the solution to my business? To answer that question, you will need explainable AI. The ability of an AI system to provide clear and understandable explanations of this decision-making process. Here are several aspects to think about when we measure the importance of explainable AI. Transparency and accountability are particularly important in industries such as finance, healthcare, and transportation, where the consequences of AI errors can be severe. Regarding trust and adoption, when people understand how an AI system works and how it arrived at its decisions, they're more likely to trust and use it. Not to mention the continued insights and improvements gained if we are equipped with the power of explainable AI. Last but not the least, compliance and regulation. Explainable AI can help businesses comply with regulations and avoid legal and reputational risks by providing clear explanations of their AI systems and ensuring that they do not perpetuate discrimination or biased practices. Okay, now we have aligned with the importance of explainable AI. Let's take a look at a concrete example of how that works. In the demo that Maddie will show us shortly, we are going to show how a pre-trained image classification model works by visualizing and highlighting the interested area of the image that the model is focusing on. Without further ado, Maddie, please take it away. Thanks, Yachi. In this demo, we're going to use class activation mapping to add some explainability to a CNN model doing cat versus dog image classification. Class activation mapping is a common technique used for explainability in the computer vision space, which allows us to identify the specific regions of an image that are relevant to the reasoning behind a machine learning model's prediction. The explainability module within our Alice library allows us to create class activation maps in a very simple way with minimal lines of code needed. So in this demo, I'll show how we can use Alice to do the heavy lifting throughout the process and talk a little bit about the reasoning behind each step and what's going on behind the scenes. So let's jump right in. Here, I've imported the explainability module from Alice, and I'll show how the, these functions come into play throughout the entire process. First, to give some context into the data set, I've chosen this cats and dogs set from Kaggle and downloaded it into my local environment. Kaggle is a popular data, scienti data science and machine learning community that contains several useful data sets, projects, and examples for a variety of machine learning use cases. The data set I downloaded is already split into training and testing sets, and I have about 8,000 images in my training set and about 2,000 in my testing set. I'm using these image data generators from Keras for pre-processing and loading data into the model for training and inference. I do want to note that this is just the way I chose to pre-process my data, but this specific approach is not required to make use of Alice. Whatever your preferred method of loading in and pre-processing your images is great. In this example, I'll be using the VGG16 model that has been pre-trained on ImageNet data. VGG16 is a popular image classification algorithm that can classify images in a thousand different categories and works well with transfer learning, which will come into play here a little later on. Taking a look at the architecture summary here, which shows the layers in the model and what the output shape of each layer is, 
we have five blocks of convolutions followed by a flattening layer and three dense layers at the end. In order to make this model suitable for class activation mapping, we're going to need to modify this architecture a little bit. The reason for this is that we need to maintain the spatial information contained in the output of the last convolutional block before it gets flattened and goes through the dense layers at the end. This spatial information we extract from that layer is crucial to computing our cl class activation map, so we don't want to lose it. We can see that here in this flattening layer is where we lose a large part of our dimensionality, specifically these 512 feature maps that contain the relevant spatial information to our class activation map. So the first thing we'll need to do is remove these last four layers here that cause us to lose that information. We will then add a global average pooling layer to reduce dimensionality in a different way that lets us keep the information we need, followed by the output softmax layer, which will have as many neurons as there are possible classes. So in our case, two for cats and dogs. I'll show what that looks like in a moment. When we then have a new classification layer, we're going to want to retrain that layer but we also don't want to destroy the information we already have in the previous layers from the original training of the model. So we're going to freeze all the layers except for that last output layer prior to doing this transfer learning. So here is where our first Alice explainability function comes into play. The architectural modifications I just went through was a lot, but the prep model method we have here takes care of all of that for us behind the scenes after we just run this single line of code. So we'll just pass in our model as well as the index of the layer at which we want to start removing all subsequent layers. In this case, I'm using minus four because that's the index of this first layer that I want to remove. So that layer as well as every subsequent layer will be taken away, leaving us ac access to this final layer that contains the spatial information that we need for our class activation map. I'm also passing in the number of classes in my data, which is two in this case. And finally, the pooling dimension, which will decide whether one-dimensional or two-dimensional global average pooling is used, depending on what is needed for um, the model we're using. So this gives us a little more flexibility depending on your model-specific architecture. Go ahead and run this. After running that, here is our new model architecture. Keep in mind that the prep model function froze every layer in our model except for this final classification layer, so we aren't losing any of the weights from the previous training of this model and we can see our new global average pooling, flattening, and dense layers have been added. So we now get to keep our 512 feature maps all the way through, and our final classification layer is compatible with our two classes, as opposed to the thousand classes that the initial model was trained on. Again, what I just described was a lot of steps, but it was all wrapped up into one function and one line of code using Alice. So now that we have a brand new classification layer in our model, we're going to want to do some transfer learning which is the reuse of a pre-trained model for a new problem. And we're going to need to train that new layer that we added. Note again that with our new model architecture, this is the only trainable layer. So the only layer whose weights will change during the training process. The second Alice function we are featuring here is responsible for doing this retraining and saving out our new model. Here I'm passing in training and validation data from our dog versus cat data set using the image generators I defined previously as well as, as the path I want to save my retrain model to and my other chosen hyperparameters. Since I'm only retraining that last layer, I'm able to get this done with only three epics, but of course you should adjust as needed. Now Alice will compile and train the model for me and save it out to the file path I've given. This does take a few minutes to run, so I'm going to kick this off now. And our retraining is done. Now we're ready to make some predictions with our new model. Here, I decided to create another image generator for a few of my favorite examples to show from the test set just for the purpose of this demo. Again, this is not a required step. So next, I'll grab a single image from that directory. I'll get my input image into the right shape and call model.predict. And here, I have printed out that prediction so we can see the softmax values for each class as well as the label for the winning class. So now it's time to compute our class activation map. To do this, we're going to grab the weights attached to the neuron that corresponds with the winning class, in this case, the cat class, um, as well as the output of the final convolution layer, which is going to contain the feature maps that we're interested in. Then we're going to weight these feature maps using the weights we gathered from the classification layer by taking the dot product. And finally, we're going to use upsampling to expand the size of the class activation map to be the same size as our original input image. So we can then plot them over one another and see our heat map. That's a lot of steps, but our function from Alice is going to take care of all of that for us. 
I'm going to pass in my predictions, the model, the image we're looking at, the name of the layer I want to get the spatial information from, which in this case is the last layer from this final convolution block, and finally the shape of my image, which will become the shape of the class activation map. By providing that information, Alice again does all the heavy lifting behind the scenes with only one line of code required from us. Cool. So now it's time to see the results. To help me with this, I'm going to import the visualization module from Alice, which includes some functions to show me my original image as well as the same image again with the visualized representation of my class activation map overlaid on top of it. So to plot my original image, I'm just passing that image in with my title set as the class of the prediction. And into my overlay cam function, I'll pass in that image again, along with the class activation map I extracted earlier and that same title again. And here is our final product. So in this first example, we have correctly predicted that it is a cat. And we can easily see with this heat map which parts of the image were most heavily considered by the model when making that decision. So here we can see that this ear as well as the whiskers seem to be particularly relevant to our model. And then for the sake of this demo, I've repeated these last few cells a couple more times just to easily show a couple more examples. Um, so this second one here has correctly predicted a dog. And we can see that the focus of the model is on the face and the paws. And then finally, this final example is especially interesting because we have an incorrect prediction. We can see we predicted cat where we have a dog. And this is a good example of where explainability can help us gain insight not only into the reasoning of our model making correct predictions, but also gain insight into how we can improve our model based on what is doing wrong. From looking at our heat map here, it looks like the main reasoning behind the model predicting cat on this image is this region surrounding the ears and upper portion of the face, which do seem to resemble the kind of pointy ears that we would commonly see on a cat. So although we did have an incorrect prediction, by adding explainability, we are no longer completely in the dark about why that incorrect prediction occurred. Um, so that concludes our demo on using Alice to prepare a CNN for class activation mapping, perform transfer learning, extract a class activation map and plot that map over our image to better understand the reasoning behind our model's prediction in an easy to visualize way. Alice lets us accomplish all of these things with minimal lines of code and minimal effort needed from us as a user. And explainability is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Alice's capabilities. I hope this was informative and I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Yachi. Thanks, Maddie, for the great demo. It's always feeling a little risky to do a live demo I'm, gl I'm glad you pulled it off by showing how easy it is to apply the explainable AI module on any given model. If anyone would like to have a free trial of our module and to take advantage of all the convenience benefits, such as how to simply just port your own model and watch the explainability interpret and visualize a model for you, please reach out to us with the attached contact of this webinar. Thanks for your attention, and I will see everyone next time during our upcoming webinar.